Hey y'all, all right, so here we are at the end of BGG day two. So it's, uh, what, Thursday night, it's, what, one twenty <laughs> in the morning? Yeah, or at night? Fr Friday morning. Right, and happy to be joined by a good friend of mine, but also you guys, I imagine, know him, Travis Hill from Low Player Count. Glad to be here, Edward, hey, thanks. You're welcome, thank you, <laughs> Travis. So, BGG Con. Yeah. Pretty Pretty good time. Pretty laid back time. It has been. Well, it's also Thursday, and it it's it's weird because unlike most conventions, it feels like it really amps up on Friday. Right. You know, people people start to come in a little little later, midday Friday. Locals that were locals. here that had to work all week. Or totally. Whatever, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. So they'll be they'll be here Friday and then Saturday and Sunday, and it's just a madhouse, you know, Friday on. But yeah, yeah. Yesterday and today have been pretty pretty low key. You I'm know? surprised it, it, this year. It genuinely feels like it just there's less people. Like there's a lot yes. more room, a lot more empty tables in all the side rooms. Like last night. At like 11 o'clock, I went up to the 11th floor, which is where we're at right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. I saw two people. <laughs> yeah, totally. And that's unheard of. Uh -huh. That shocked uh -huh. the heck out of me. But but tonight, I guess probably at about 7, 7.30, I just walked through the main gaming room, and there were only like three tables open. So it feels like people are kind of congregating more into specific areas as opposed to siloing off into s some of the smaller rooms. But yep. that, that's all going to change here in the next couple days anyways. Yeah, yeah. as the numbers increase, yep. the tables are going to get more sparse yep. and yep. it's going to get a lot louder. Yay. Yeah. I know, I, I, I know you're <laughs> totally. thrilled about that thrilled. as much as I am. Oh, I have my headphones in all the time when I'm walking around. Do you yeah. really? No, maybe not all the time, right? Really? Yeah, totally. See, so earbuds, always, earbuds all the I'm time. I'm so yeah. worried that people will be like, oh, he just ignored me. Be like, I never knew, I didn't, I'm so paranoid about that, so I'm terrified to, to keep it. I so in. don't care. <laughs> I, I just, I really, truly don't. I don't care at all. <laughs> and that might, that might not be a good media presence, but really, I don't care. Now, now, whenever I'm going through the vendor halls, that's a different story, I think, you know, just because I'm, I'm actually engaging with people sure, and talking right. to them. But I mean... <clears throat> Sometimes you just need to space out, you know, and there's there is nothing wrong with I'm going to go get food at the crappy food place by myself with my earbuds in and not talk to anyone. I'm perfectly fine with this. <laughs> That's 30 minutes that I'm I get terrified. without sound. I, I that I God bless you. I. <laughs> I am so jealous of you to be able to. <laughs> I am just not that brave, I guess. Nope. I, I would nah. love to be able to do nah. that. Nah. Not concerned. All right, so let's see. Today, uh, slept in, which I felt a little guilty about, actually. Mm. So I got to bed, I don't know, about 3 in the morning. Well, no. Wow. I, I got to bed about 2.15, but actually fell asleep about 3 o'clock. Sure. Um, even though I was exhausted hours before, it just ends up 2 o'clock. No matter what I do, I see 2 o'clock on the clock got it. Which, every night. Yeah, that's, that's going to be about average tonight. Right, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I slept in, and I was like, you know what? I need this. I am mm -hmm. just physically and mentally drained. Good. And I was like, okay, I'm going to sleep in. I slept in till 9. Wow. I didn't leave my room till 11. <laughs> Yeah, and that's it, bonkers. Well, I'm and a, it was glorious. Well, I'm a morning person, and so for me, it's just like up and at them as early as I can make it happen. Totally. No, that, that, that was not me today. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I know I got the meet up later tonight. I need to be, sure, sure. you know, I need to have some energy for that. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? This will pay dividends later. And I'm glad I did. Good. And I didn't Good. feel guilty about that at least. Yeah, so there was yeah. that. Um, so I have. Three roommates. So the okay. first night, uh -huh. I had no roommates. Oh, that's nice. Uh, it, 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 oh, it was wonderful. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The second night, uh, Sweater Mike showed up. Okay. So last night, uh, Sweater Mike showed up, and then uh, two random people. Sure. Uh, a, a, as you do. Yeah. So Kyle is a patron, and that's I fine. had a, a couple of tickets left over. I sold one on BGG, mm -hmm. and then he, he, he spoke up on the Slack channel, and he's like, hey... Do you still have that ticket? I might be interested in going. It's my first ever convention. Oh, wow. And I sure. was like, yeah, it's yours if you want it, man. Mm -hmm. He's like, all right, mm -hmm. let me know. So he ended up saying yes. And then he's like, 
I don't have any place to stay. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? You can take some floor space. I got a room. Yeah. Sure. Chip uh-huh. in and we'll call it good. Yep. And he's like, well, my buddy, who's new to the hobby-ish, um, kind of wants to maybe come. And he's like, if I get him a ticket, I was like, sure, we'll figure sure. it out. Yeah. Two guys never met in my life. Mm-hmm. So I told Amanda, if I you don't hear from me again, here's their <laughs> names. And no, no, I'm kidding, Kyle and Jason. Oh, but that's funny. Showed up. They were they were just as friendly as can be. Um, and Kyle has a like little inflatable mattress or whatever. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. Jason does not. So I couldn't just make him sleep on the floor. So I said, all right, I guess we're spooning. Mm-hmm. So we spooned. Not really. We didn't. We 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 shared a queen size bed, but didn't spoon. <laughs> uh, but no, slept in. It was yeah, glorious. Yeah, anyway, yeah, so good. so what's what's been going on with you, man? Yeah. So this has been this has been a weird convention. Um, for whatever for whatever reason, um, I I got married before I knew about BGG Con, and so my anniversary happens right in the middle of BGG Con. So hold on. It floats around. Hold on. I have a challenge coin in my pocket right here. Sure. And it says two things on it. Yeah. It says, uh, (laughs) it says, what's the first one? Uh, It says plan better. Obviously, right? Yeah, (laughs) yeah, exactly. Exactly. But that second one says play better. It does. And so I played very well today. And today, uh, Thursday, the 16th, I I took off from BGG Con to go (gasps) spend time with my wife because we're we're local. Smart man. So I played better. I could have planned better, but I executed well. (laughs) Um, I did, uh, I did unfortunately wake up with uh, a pretty massive migraine this morning. Uh, Oh, dude, and so I, it was, that's no, it was, those so, are no joke. It was, it was pretty debilitating. I got, I was pretty nauseous for a few hours. So instead of our, we were going to do all sorts of fun, kind of silly, but special things today, you know? Couple things. Couple that things. You do, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. Right. Fancy breakfast. We're going to go see a movie. We're going to go to the Nasher Sculpture Garden out here, which we love. Um, and then go to fancy dinner and stuff like that. However, migraine. Said However, no. migraine <laughs> meant that my wife drove out to the airport and actually picked me up. She was like, I just don't want you to drive. I'm like, fine. So we go get breakfast and then we go back home to, to, do a couple things real quick, uh, get some errand stuff done, and decided, you know what? We don't want to see the movie. Let's just not. We don't want to go to the sculpture garden. Let's not do that either. So we went and ordered the new iPhone instead. And then we went to we went to this place called Bar and Garden, which is a local like organic, like hand curated like wine shop. And while we were there, they were Ooh. like they were like, hey, we got these wines. You want to check them out? So we basically had a wine tasting. We were there for an hour and a half. Then we went to Pluckers, which is a super awesome wing bar. And then I came back to BGG Con. So it was the exact opposite of what we wanted, but it was exactly what we needed. That's awesome, right? Dude. That, and, that's fantastic. And so man. and so it was super weird. Like this is just been super strange because like yesterday was a great day played oodles of games yesterday including this five hour game learning game of high frontier with jim from punching cardboard um bill Corey, who did a fantastic job teaching this game and no ran joke. the game and right? ran the yep. game. he did a yep. fantastic job him and his girl molly and then tom who is my roommate here the five of us tom jim and myself had not played high frontier and i said bill did a fantastic job fantastic a job of teacher but it was just it was later we were tired it was five freaking hours long sure. for the base game you know <laughs> and we got done with that and then we played zoo ball from osprey which is just if people don't know it's this two to four player dexterity game on like this 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 four corner con game it is. after a big game it right is. it yes. is it's this, it's this four player this two to four player like felt mat that has ripples in it that they even say don't iron it out just let it be rippled and you're flicking discs that's all it is but it was absolutely perfect after this five hour game but which, that was like one in the morning obviously that you're playing zoo ball which i need to try this game because yes. i'm actually in the game there's oh, a, <laughs> there's an yes. emu in uh-huh. the Edward Martin Euler. Exactly. I am in the game. I have to try this game. <laughs> and I saw you guys playing it. And who was it? So Holly tweeted out last night. <laughs> it's yeah. not rocket science, Jim. 
We already did, or y'all already did that, and I saw a picture of you just busting a that, guy. Uh, that that was me. I, made, I I was proud of that. Proud of that comment right there. <laughs> we just finished this massive five hour five player game of High Frontier, and Jim couldn't realize that he needed to flick Chris. Uh, we needed to flick Chris's disc out of the way, otherwise he was going to score, and he just couldn't see it. And I just looked at him. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, Jim, this isn't rocket science. It's right there. We just did that, and everybody <laughs> lost it. It's one in the morning. Sure. We're all yeah, exhausted yeah, yeah. at this Rum point. Dumb at that Absolutely point, right? perfect, yeah. you know. Um, nice. So, so it was great. But you know, that happened. I woke up to this stupid migraine, but then fortunately I'm fine now. But then I was gone all day. Came back. Saw a couple other guys from low player count, you know, saw Donnie and a good local buddy of ours, Cliff. And then I sat down and played a game of John Company. And I as played, you do, a, just as, a pickup as game you of, John do, of John Company. And, and so I played it with Cole, Cole taught it, Cole really the designer. Um, Mark Von Minden, he was in it. He Who, was, part of our group, and he, right? And yep. he was one of the play testers. I yep. obviously edited the rule book, so three of us knew the game very, very well. And we played with three other guys who had played either zero or one time. And we played the, the early company, which is just the, the beginning scenario game, right? And there were six of us, <laughs> and I took, I took the tactic of, I'm not going to do anything in this game. I am not going to play John Company by I, playing John Company I, by not playing John Company. Exactly. <laughs> I, I made two deals, two negotiations in the entirety of the game. Both of them were with Mark. And involved other people's cubes. So you you have debt cubes based or promise cubes that you're giving around to other people that they owe you one. Well, someone gave me a promise cube for something, and I sold that promise cube to Mark for two bucks so I could buy a boat. And I mean, that's like that's the most negotiation I did in the entire game. I was never chairman. I never. Everybody was piping in. Oh, oh, I'll give you a. I'll give you a promise cube. I'll give you two bucks for this. And I was just like, no, I'm not. And I got third. I got third. I so tied you, with Cole. So as you, a matter of fact, so you didn't play John Company and came in third. Correct. In in, uh, in for all intents and purposes, right? Yeah, I I I barely played the game and I didn't play it well. But just the way that it worked out and everybody just kind of hosing everybody this and that or whatever. I did great. <laughs> Which is kind of interesting. Like it is when you first told me about this earlier. I was like. Is that a good aspect <laughs> of the game to where you can not play and finish yeah. midway through? Well, and it, it is because it, it's one of those things that if you, even if you don't fully, because it's a Sierra Madre game, right? And, and that stuff's always going to be complex to some degree. Even, right. even if Cole's initial thought process was for this to be a simpler introduction into the pack series. Or, or like as Vital says, it's an easy game. You play a card, you draw a card. Easy game. <laughs> exactly. Right? right. You move over here, you do this thing, that's it. You got one or two choices. <laughs> oh, it's not hard. Sure. Oh, sure it's not sure. Me at all. Right. And so that's all it is, right? And so that that was the entirety of the game. And and so, you know, Cole taught taught it for all of ten minutes and then it was like, okay, then just go just choose something. Okay, great. And then he's unraveling the rules as he goes, which is such a brilliant way to do it. I mean, Cole's fantastic. I am so... I don't understand how you can do that. I am... I'm in... I'm amazed mm. that Cole's able to do that. Sure. Because I can't... I'm the type of guy that... Here, I'm going to give you all the information. All sure. Go. Sure. Right? I think, I, think, I think the vast majority of, like, Eklund games... With the exception, with the exception of the pack series, right? With the exception of those three games, anything else you can do that though, to to a degree, right? You can you can front load thirty percent of the rules and then unravel as you go. This is how Bill did it last time when we played High Frontier. He was like, "I'm going to give you seventy percent of the game, and then just the stuff that you need to know, you just need to know." And it's a first game and it's a hard game, so we'll mulligan if we absolutely have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, which no is problem. It's whatsoever. a learning game, right? Yeah, and treat yeah, it as such. exactly. Sure. And so yeah, so we played we played John Company, and no surprise, the the company failed because everybody's working deal making stupid deals with everybody else, you know. And so the, working. 
looking worried too much about themselves instead of the company itself, right? It, it, yeah, and plus some bad die rolls, which whatever you know, however however you want to deal with that. But instead of it going all six rounds, it went three. <laughs> and, and in the game, what happens is that um, the negative points are if there's anybody ever in the in an executive spot, they get negative three victory points and there aren't a lot of victory points to start with in this so game. negative three is pretty significant and, and so i got third as i said tied with cole so we tied in third place with minus two points just to give you an idea of the caliber of our company so that's the only game i played today but it was a marvelous experience to have good to try something totally it was my third place so it was, it was my it was the time to try something totally different that's you know? cool so high frontier um, first experience, what'd you think? That was a game that I played. <laughs> <laughs> Honest, honestly, I, I, can, I can see how people can get immersed in it. I can see how people can really, really enjoy it. I would rather just play Leaving Earth. No okay. joke. It, okay. because, because what I... Leaving Earth, I think, distills down what I like about a, a space game into what I like about it. At it, least until Space Court... Core comes out, right? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just going to be a weird one. I think it's going to be it, it's going to be different. I, I'm a big fan of logistics games, right? And so whenever we got to those points of High Frontier, I'm like, ooh, this is fun. But whenever I got to the, okay, I'm still just sailing across space <laughs> for the, I got to take money for the 15th turn in a row. Because you know? I And then just... I guess we'll auction this thing that I'm not going to need that I'm going to sell for more money. You know, sure, it's it's fine, you know, um, but I don't know. I don't know if the overhead of it for me is worth the, the amount of time that I'm going to have to put into it is worth the actual gameplay for me. But you're glad so, you experienced oh, it. Oh, 100%. Yeah, it, was, it has been high on my list. And I would sit down and try it again at some point, you know, I think sooner rather than later because I have an idea and not with five players where three of us are new. Maybe a three player game where I'm, it's my second play and the other two people have at least. A better idea of what's I going on. I think that's probably the ideal way to do it. We're sure, gonna, we're, sure. When we do our teaching game of it, our stream of it, mm -hmm. it's probably going to be three players totally. of us. I, so, I, yeah, I, I think, I think that's so. Good. That's good. So, for well, me. What, today, yeah, it's like, what about you? <laughs> um, so, I started this morning. I checked out bio, uh, a game called Biosphere last night because I'd seen some people playing it down. Uh, I literally. Do you know how hard it is for a game to escape my being aware of it that's pretty rare sure sure um and i had no clue never see uh, it was at essen and i missed it who put it so, out uh triple d like <gasps> gbmh or gmbh or whatever okay, sure. uh something overseas uh german company yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. um anyway biosphere so the idea of it it just looked cool that honestly yeah. i knew nothing about the game other than the name and it's got all these dice out here on these tiles and it okay. looked kind of cool okay yeah. okay cool so i checked it out and this morning i was going to go learn it and then uh the stance comes up i eat james uh <laughs> i saw him and he's like oh yeah biosphere i was like yeah do you like it he's like uh i was like oh okay it's gonna be like that okay and he's like, no, it was, uh, it had some pretty cool, interesting stuff. Mm. And I was like, oh, so you've played it? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you teach it? Yeah, I can. Sit. <laughs> Please. <laughs> right? Please. So uh, me, him, and Chad Deshaun, mm -hmm. uh, head of BoardGameTables.com, yep. we sat down on one of his tables, and he ran us through the game. So Funny. without going into too many details, the it's... Everybody is a is a uh, almost dominant species, like to where you're sure. a, in a type of animal. Like I think James was the polar bears, I was the cranes or the birds, and I forget what uh, what uh, Chad was. But you have dice as your species that mm -hmm. will go out, and you have different tracks that you're trying to increase, and you have certain survivability on different types of land tiles, and you put dice out there. But there's this there's this um, not a rondelle, but kind of just a, a little timer that goes that, okay, next turn, all of the dice with two pips on them will die. Oh, and wow. so it's, it's, you see the, the rise and fall of different animals on different <laughs> land uh, tile or different land masses out there. And you're trying to 
uh, reach these different goals. You're supposed to get to five of these goals uh, to be able to win the game. And it could be like um, be dominant, meaning you have more species on the on this tile than mm -hmm. other and than another on five different edge tiles, or be have uh, one or be have less than another species but be on the same tile on six different tiles different little milestones that sure. you can do and it really becomes a bit of a spatial game because you have to learn how to manipulate your dice onto these different tiles but the kicker is every time your dice or your species move on an adjacent tile there they go down one pip hmm. meaning they die one turn earlier Interesting. And, and so you have to be able to spread out to be able to qualify for these things. Okay, okay I got it. Now they can die. That's huh. okay. And it was, it had some really cool stuff about it. I'm not 100% sure on it, but I would <laughs> enough, it's interesting enough to want to try it again. Which Exactly, yeah. There's that, right? Which goes a long way. Let's, let's, it really, be, let's it, be real it, honest. Yeah, it There's really plenty of games you play one time and you're just like, eh, I'm all set. Yeah, done. I'm good done. at that point. Yeah. Uh, then after that, I went up, and before you got into John Company with Cole, mm -hmm. I actually, uh, he had just picked up a copy of Wildcatters, like cool. new and shrink still oh, wow. here. And so I got, uh, Sweater Mike was just finishing up his game of uh, Through the Ages from this morning, and so it was Sweater Mike, Cole, and his buddy Chaz, mm -hmm. and me. I thought I was just going to teach the game. Nope, I'm playing. Okay, <laughs> so it's the four of us. Sure. So I taught Cole Wildcatters and Chaz, and we played it, and hashtag good teacher. Chaz uh, pretty securely won the game with Sweater Mike being in second, and Sweater Mike lo loves the game. So cool. that's no big surprise there. Good. So Wildcatters was good. Went to dinner, then we had the meetup. The meetup was amazing. We had a bunch of people show up. Yeah, totally. Um, just hanging out, having drinks. Then we came up, played games. That's where you... Played John Company, I mm -hmm. think. Yep. Um, I played, uh, <laughs> so Asger Granalud uh, and Daniel Peterson, the designers of 13 Days yep. and Iron Curtain and Flamme Rouge and among others. So Asger won the tournament at Essen for Clask. You oh, know, the funny. little yeah, dexterity yeah, totally, thing, totally, right? Yeah. When we were downstairs, he was like, hey, I just want to let you know. And he picked up a, his copy of Clask, awesome. and I was like, I'm going to get destroyed. <laughs> I was like, okay. So we come upstairs, first thing first. He's like, it's on. Let's do this. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to so whoop your ass. Not really at all. <laughs> um, he's next level. Clask, like I didn't know there was a second level <laughs> to Clask. He's like, achieved it. Yeah, he, 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 he like a whole new level here, dude. To where he was like playing with his off hand. No, I'm I'm kidding, but it was amazing to watch him That's whoop funny. my ass. That is um, funny. So he won the first. So we were gonna play best two out of three. Sure. Which means we're playing two. You're playing two games. <laughs> uh, he won six nothing. Mm -hmm. First one. And he's like, oh, we have to switch sides. So we did. And he says, um, we, so he's he's uh, Danish. Yes. And uh, he's like, so we have a saying that, uh, uh, or that you know, a, a bet that um, I'm gonna I'm gonna win cake. And he says, I I know I'm going to win cake. He says, so I'll mm. tell you what, if you score, you win cake. Period. The end. If yeah. you score. Uh -huh. It was five nothing. Him in the second game, <laughs> boom! I scored <laughs> what? So, and I was very happy that Scoops. Thomas got video of me. So he said oh, awesome. he has like seven thirty second videos of us playing uh -huh. and him kicking my ass. I don't know what he's talking about. I only have one thirty second <laughs> video of me scoring. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> that is perfect. <laughs> Oh, I love it. <laughs> so I returned the favor, and it was uh, I taught Daniel and Oscar and Sweater Mike again, but mm -hmm. he's played it a number of times, Kalimala, mm -hmm. as well as one other uh, Danish fella, and they loved it. I thought they would because they like boiling a game down to its most, its essence. Mm -hmm. And Kalimala is all about taking one good mechanic and carrying the entire game from this one mechanic cool and i've now played the game about a dozen times okay since gen con i think i'm all set for a little while 
I think. Sure. Yeah, totally. I don't think I need to play any more Kalimala for the next handful of months. <laughs> I'm all set. Yep. But everybody that who's happens. played it has enjoyed it, so that's a win. And then uh, because Oscar and Daniel can't not have prototypes with them, uh, although this wasn't a prototype, it was actually a published game, a game called Iron Curtain. Oh, which, yeah, yeah. Have you, are you familiar with it yeah, at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't played it, but, but I know about it. It's yeah. basically 13 days, but done in a completely different way to where, as Asger explained it to me, 13 days is a bluffing game, mm-hmm. and this is more a area control, area majority yeah. game. There's, there's cards and cubes involved inst- yeah. instead of a central board and right, stuff. Right, but yeah. it's still Twilight Struggle reduced down. And yes. I'm like, this blows me away, how you can take Twilight Struggle... And boil it down in different ways and yep. make compelling games. Mm-hmm. How the hell do you do that, man? Yeah, yeah. I, good designers. That, yeah, I mean that's what this, that's right? what it boils right? down to. So that was that was cool to see, and so that may be a game that comes up uh, that we live stream during the uh, advent of Christmas gaming. Sure. Uh, I saw Jay had the new coin game, the Gandhi. India. Yeah, yeah Jay the Volk. Gandhi. Yeah, yeah. I went in and said hi to him. I I saw it at Origins. Um, I did it, as well. Yeah, yeah. Him right. and Grace yep. and a couple of the guys were playing, and so it was kind of cool to to walk around and see that. Uh, but it, I I walked past and I said hi to Jay because I hadn't seen him at all this con. Um, so I walked up to him and I was like, oh, how's Gandhi going? It's like good, good. He was like. Are you working on this game at all? And I'm like, no, I haven't been asked yet. Because sometimes I'll do, you know, I'll, I'll do rulebook stuff with GMT and, and things like that. But I was like, no. And, and he said, well, the um, they just changed all the cards, and apparently the designer Bruce Mansfield just changed all the cards like literally just a few days ago. And so all of the cards they were having to reference off of their phone digitally. <laughs> and I was like. Yeah, that that's a thing. W- welcome to playtesting. Yeah, well, well, that's that's why. That's part of it, you know. It's like that that's playtesting. That that for everybody that sits there and goes, "Man, I want to be involved in playtesting." You really need to be involved in playtesting. You don't <laughs> you don't part way go into something and be like, "This is cool. I'll get my name in a rule book." Well, that cuz that's get, what all it is. And I get to I get to play the game early. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Through sometimes all of its uh, less desirable stages right. of the game. And that is why I do not play tests. I, 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 did, I did early on for that same reason. And then I found out very quickly, this is not my gig. Right. I, yeah, I'm going to uh, go do other stuff. Right. Hey, for those that do, God bless you. Oh Thank you. Gosh. We appreciate yeah. your, fine, your finished totally. game. We appreciate your hard work. Yes. That's all you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. But yeah, yeah, Gandhi is here. And so it, it's always cool to see to see that stuff out in the wild. You yeah. Know? Not not just not just a picture on Twitter, but like, oh, that, 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 oh that's wait, it. That's it right Gandhi, there. Gandhi, not like Gandhi himself, because he's, he's no longer with us. That'd sure. be weird. But the game. The so, game. yeah, that was cool to see. And then uh, Isaac Childress came yep. to the meetup, mm-hmm. um, so, which is awesome. Uh, he and I have become pretty good friends. And he was running guys through a four-player game of Founders of Gloomhaven. Oh, cool. Um, which I think everybody was pretty excited to, yeah. to dig into. So that was cool to see. Um, let's see what else. I saw German Mike playing mm. uh, Pax Renaissance, as he is wont to do. If he's not playing Here I Stand, Virgin Queen, yep. or Demacher, yep. he's playing <laughs> Pax Renaissance. That, that's about it. Right. That's and, about it. But it was awesome to finally see him. Uh-huh. It's the first time I got a chance to see him, and uh, the the all time favorite joke that I cannot tell on the show. Uh, he when the night he and I met a few years ago playing Demacher, and he and I have been really good friends ever since. So cool. it was cool to good. see him, good. and that that kind of again. I mean, I say this a lot whenever I go to conventions that playing the games is awesome, mm-hmm. but it's all about hanging out with the people. Oh, and, totally. And, I mean, you and I have been sitting here talking for an hour, hour and a half before we decided, oh, we probably we, ought to record this, <laughs> sure, right? Sure, So, yeah, it's, it's, it's all about the people. Oh, oh 100% of the time. You know, I mean, and it's, and it's funny. So, like, like, Saturday at BGG Con is kind of, it's kind of the big day. They do all the announcements and the stuff at the end, you know, which 
are, are honestly are never really super super exciting, but it's it's kind of a cool culminating factor of the con, right? Right. And so, um, and so throughout the convention, I actually don't hang out with the low player account guys a whole lot because we're all you local. See them and, all and we the see time. Them. But right. on Saturday, I make it a point that we're hanging out together the majority of the day on Saturday. You know, we will camp out at a table from nine a.m. until the end of everything, just because it's fun and like that's our day. And so every other day leading up to that is always a, well, I'm going to go talk to people and play games with people that I just never see anyways, you know, and it's not looked on so favorably often, you know, but it's because, you know, they want to get a game in and I, and I'm very appreciative. They want to get a game in with me, but sometimes it's like, man, I, I don't see these people, but like once a year. And so I want to see them. I'll, I will see you next week during Thanksgiving. Right. (laughs) So, you know know what? How about we rain check it till then, right? <laughs> exactly. But but it's but it's fun. But yeah, it's totally people. You know, I spend four of the five days dealing with other people and talking to other people and being with them. And so I have to spend my one day with the LPC crew just to sure. be like, well, of course, you know, right? well, you know, you gotta, you gotta do something with them, make some presence known. Right. <laughs> and then I saw, uh, Kyle, Tim, Jason, uh, playing Forex tonight. And oh, yeah. that went over pretty well, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. from what I heard. Yeah, and then the after that, uh, things kind of wound down and I, Walk the earth like Kane, or i.e. through the main game room. Sure, I just like wandering around and seeing what totally. I was getting played, totally. and just I don't ever want to sit down there and really play a game. But I do the exact same thing. I'll just I'll just meander and just see what everybody's doing. Right, and it's just it's just fun to be in the in the ambiance in in, uh-huh. in the in the atmosphere of everything down there. Mm-hmm. And I saw. Uh, a fellow elephant down there, um, struggling a little bit to teach Kalimala. <laughs> so I was like, "Hey, do you do you want some help?" And he's like, "Yes, please." So mm, I awesome. did an impromptu teaching of yeah. Kalimala down there, and then said, "Okay, bye." Walked around a little bit more, um, and then came back around. Said, "How's it going?" "Yep, going yep. great." "Okay, cool. Have a good sure. night. Enjoy the sure. rest of the con, guys." And then came up here. Up here. So you were talking about camping tables. Tell yeah. me about uh, what what you got going on tomorrow. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, so tomorrow's going to be uh, interesting. There's there's a small. I'm really excited about. There's this. a small subset of us that um, we just decided, uh, like this was like nine months ago, I guess, that we all just kind of that it, it it's me and Skippin and Paul and, and Marcus and, and Marcus, local friend of mine, Marcus and uh, Mark von Minden. Um, we just decided, you know I what? I think it's funny that it's your circle of friends and our, my circle of friends just kind that of kind of got together converging. just totally, totally. purely coincidental. Yeah, right? exactly. And so we were just like, well, you know what? Why don't we... None of us are ever able... Not none of us, but, but the majority of us are not able to get a lot of Winsome's played just because of player count for... You know, it, it it's it's not happenstance that that I do a podcast on one and two player board games. Like, <laughs> I legit, like it is hard to field three to five people on a consistent basis, right? Um, and so, but because of that, um, we just decided, you know what? What if we've always talked every single time? Why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we just play more? Why don't we just sit down? Like we have all these games, we 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 blind buy all of these games. It pops up in the marketplace for sixty bucks, and you buy it because that's what you do. <laughs> and you're just like, well, we need to just play them. Well, that's weird. And so and so tomorrow, from we have the room reserved from eight thirty a.m. until eight p.m. eleven and a half hours, and we are shipping in. Shipping in Marcus. Marcus owns the majority of them, I should say. But we're we're bringing in forty or fifty winsomes easily. You know, um, it's a conference room, so we're we have room for two, maybe a third, maybe a third right. with some tiny people in the middle. You know, um, but we have we have the room for eleven and a half hours, and we're gonna try and cram just as many winsomes in as possible. Not eighteen XX winsomes people. I mean, just you know, right. it, that that's not. You're what talking we're, like Irish Gage. 
stuff yeah, like that. Totally, yeah, yeah. totally. And probably not a lot of Union versus Central going down. <laughs> Skippin brought his copy. <laughs> and so we're, you know, because he has the upgraded dice. I don't. I still have, you know, the, the, poor, micro the poor man's micro dice, you know, the, the 0.5 millimeter dice. Those are mine. Um, and, so, and so that probably won't happen, but I don't know. But what, I, what I've been really excited about is that, is that we thought, well, you know, it'll be the five of us. And then, so we'll be able to just knock out just kind of whatever we want. And then, you know what? At Origins, I played I played a few Winsons with Cole Worley and his brother Drew. And so he he mentioned that. And I was like, hey. And I, I thought about it. And a couple months later, I was like, hey, you know, if, if you come to BGG Con, which I know you're, you're want to do. I know you do that. But, you know, him getting his new position at Leader Games, he was like, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to come. Right. Um, but, but, he, but I was like, if you come we'll have a spot open for you. I mean, it's going to be a large enough table that we should be able to get two games going for a time. He's like, okay, cool. That's fine. And then like five months later, like last week, he literally shot me a message and was like, oh, hey, that, okay, so so Winston, so there's space. There's space. If I bring some people, there's going to be space. I went, yes. And uh, and so the big planning lists, you know, for BGG Con, I hopped, there's always one for 18XX. And at the very bottom, there's one just for Winston's. And they say, non-18XX Winston games because they're, because they're the same people like the same stuff, right? I posted on there, we're going to be here. These are the games we're bringing. And I listed all of the games that we're bringing. And... I think at some point, like, there are going to be about 25, it seems like there are going to be about 25 to 30 people that are going to Tagging come in and, in and out of that room. I'm one of them. Which, yes. which I'm, I'm, I'm super stoked about just because it's like, why not do something ridiculous like this? We never, we never, this is a perfect opportunity to have people that are all on board with, let's just do it, you know? And at some point, we're going to get tired of, yeah, I'll take that chair for 15 at some point, we're going to get tired of that, and we'll take a break. You know, we might play something else, but the other half of the table won't be. They're, right. they're going to be playing whatever it is that they're sure. playing, you know? I'm looking forward so. to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm not going to be there the whole day, but no, I'm definitely no. going to tag in for a game please, or two. Please, please. Uh, and then, speaking of just, you know, crazy, weird game day stuff like sure. that, uh -huh. 8 o'clock tomorrow night, James, the same one that taught me Biosphere, mm -hmm. at the meetup last year, he had brought up the idea of how about, have you ever seen the geek list on BGG where they are, uh, you're the only one that's yes. played this game yes. this uh -huh. month? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he's like, I'm going to host the game day where it's nothing but those games. Sure. To where these most obscure, bizarre, <laughs> not always good games that... Mm -hmm. And so he shot an email to the folks at BGG and said, would you guys be willing to go into the library and you know the and dig these games out oh, and bring fun. them and then allow us to check out like 35 of them at once so we can have this game day? Sure. And they're like, Absolutely. So cool. eight o'clock tomorrow night, I'm going to be partaking in some really obscure, really awesome. bizarre, maybe not so good, may, maybe diamonds <laughs> in the rough you, you games know. that almost nobody ever ever plays. Uh -huh. That I I don't think I've heard mm -hmm. of a single one of these. So I am super <laughs> excited to. That's fun. You know, let's do something why, wacky and why not and stuff that you're never going to do at home. Well, exactly, and that's the. Uh, Obviously, that's the whole point of a convention, you know. Right. But that's the beauty of that's the beauty of this, yep. you know. I I love that. I love that so much. I've I've been on that list with Union versus Central. <laughs> of the only person that played this this month, <laughs> me and yep. Skippin' against and, each other. <laughs> and Amanda's a really big fan of seeing some of these really obscure things oh, like this. Good. So this is she gets a chance to live vicariously through me to talk about having experienced totally. this. So I think. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, it is, man. Good. Good, good, good. Yeah. So uh, day three, or well, I guess technically day two, but include day zero. So it's three days into B BGG Con at least. So, sure. Uh, Energy is still pretty good. Not wearing down too much. I will say this. I am very, very happy to be leaving at the crack of dawn on Sunday and not oh. having a fifth mm -hmm. or sixth day. Uh, on Sunday, because I think that would be just past my threshold mm, sure. of what I could handle. 
And conversely, for me, being gone all day today, Thomas, who we're rooming with, Donnie and I are both rooming with Thomas, he, um, he has the room Saturday night as well. See, us local guys, whenever we would get the room, we would get it uh, Wednesday night through Friday night. And we would check out, like, you know, more like midday Saturday, Saturday morning, stay here all day and then drive and then home, drive right? home at yeah. midnight or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But for the first time ever, I'm actually going to stay here Saturday night, probably get in like one little game on Sunday morning and then just head on back home, which is going to be nice. Having been gone all day today, that was, sure. that was a it little bit of makes up for it. It does. It does. It makes up for it. Cause I don't come in on Tuesday, obviously cause I'm local. So I just drive in Wednesday morning at eight or nine o'clock or whatever, but the hotel room was there. Why not use it? Yeah, you absolutely know? dude. For cool. the first time, ever cool why not <laughs> so yeah uh win some day tomorrow looking forward to that <sighs> and then day. and then obscure games that nobody ever That's plays fun. Tomorrow night. So. That's fun. I do have. I do have in uh, in six hours now. <laughs> in six hours, which Winsome Day starts in six and a half hours. Um, but I have I have my craft coffee exchange, which is my fourth annual craft coffee exchange in the Winsome Day room because. We got a, that's got the room it. we had reserved. <laughs> right, might as well. So cool, man. Well, it's a, we, it'll be we, fun. We better get you out of <laughs> we here. We probably so. should. All right. So thanks, everybody, for listening. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch you all later. See ya.